I mean, you see all this in here. Look at all these. This is a huge cluster. Is this more than you would get just growing tomato plants? Oh yeah, they grow about twice as fast yeah. and you get about twice the production. In fact, right now, everybody's telling me they've lost their tomato crop because the weather has been so weird this year. Yet, I do, I do, I do nothing. I ha, I've been so busy doing the other stuff I have to do, the garden has been totally ignored. That's why everything looks such a mess because I just haven't had a chance to get out here and, and actually clean up, work on it. What is the system? We call it vertical hydroponics and we call these trees or towers. And then the pot itself, right here, is called a quad pot. This is a quad pot. You can see it's extremely thick. For the lip, the reason we do this, think of a house. Think of this as the eave. So the eave puts shadow on the side, which means in the summer, the roots are cooler. In the winter, the sun's lower on the horizon, so it heats the side, and the roots are warmer, just like you need. The lip is big to create the eave. Also, as you can see with tomato plants, it will lay over without kinking and hurting the plant. And the pot's gotta be heavy enough because people don't realize, I have about seven copycat companies out there that copied our system. None of them can grow tomatoes because when they start getting big like this, they split their pots in half. And ours doesn't. <laughs> All this is just two pots. If you look, it's just, one tower with just two pots and look at all the load i you know i i'm betting there's over a hundred pounds of tomatoes right now on this one tree just looking at all these tomatoes and you can see there's more flowers which means more to come stuff looks kind of haphazard but the best thing about all this is no matter how lazy you are how little you want to work or how careless you are the damn thing grows and grows gangbusters it's re that's why i call it easy grow the odds of you making a mistake is really hard i started doing the planter systems back in 1997. by 2000 i had come up with a basic idea of how to do it and by 2002 i was producing these tower systems like this as a kit this is your backyard, basically. I mean, yeah, about, it's what about. I would, what I call a backyard garden. I just have it in my front yard. Let me show you how the mm -hmm. system works. The first thing we do is we've got to make nutrient or okay. food for the plant. So it comes into these three tanks, which have my liquid concentrate. The water pumps through this system. It's putting the concentrate in, and then it's now filling up my nutrient tank. This is my irrigation tank. So when it's time for irrigation, which is in about a half an hour, the nutrient, this will move into this when this demands it, when it's okay. low. This irrigation tank sends it out to the field through this water line right here, it goes to this pipe and it goes to these lines up here. So when it's running, now it's running, you'll see in a minute, this line, it's starting to come out so it'll water and if you come around here it'll go down you saw the holes in the pots right right it'll go through this pot through this pot then go into the drain dish the drain dish will put it into the drain line which goes onto this big pipe right here yes. go back to the sump tank which then again gets pumped back out into the field so it will come back yeah it'll but just run in a circle, circle okay. until it's gone and as, soon, and as soon as it's gone, this tank tells this tank I need more, and it refills itself. And then when that tank's empty, it tells the RO system it needs more, it needs to make more food, and it kicks on the injectors automatically and makes more food. So I always have a tank full of food, a tank that's circulating, and I irrigate the garden every hour for about two minutes from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Everything we did here basically was scientifically engineered. This is one of my new pots. It's got my logo. I did this about eight, 10 years ago. And I think I can pull up one over here that might be dirty, but this pot doesn't, it's dirty. If I wash it, it just has the patent number on it. But this one is 20 some odd years old. 
It was my original pots in 97. Now, granted, if I were to wash it, it would be just like this one. So the strength comes from the thickness, from the shape. What's your sauce in there? Yeah, it's a combination. It's the design, the thickness, and the shape. Think about it. If we did a regular square pot, that's how big the corner would be. You can't fit a plant in that. So we round it out. And then we added the lip. So it, you, things can roll over. Because you can grow a lot, as you can see, and you can see how much bigger the plants are than the pot is. Pots are almost invisible now. And the design helps strength-wise. And, oh, this one's ready to be picked. I call this one, we call it a Cinderella beefsteak. They're at least a pound to a pound and a half a piece. Imagine 10 or 20 of these hanging off the side of a pot. Now you're talking 20, 30 pounds hanging off the side of this. So you can see why a normal pot would split. <laughs> Yeah, the copycat companies. The biggest thing they did to make a cheaper pot was reduce the amount of plastic from a pound and a half to less than eight ounces. So the entire pot is this thickness. And they're indestructible. In fact, you want to, you got it? And they just bounce. They never break. No, they just bounce. <laughs> and I'm trying to make it hit on the edge. And they'll torque, but they just spring back. I mean, well, let's put it this way. We sell these to farmers. The last thing a farmer needs to be doing is buying his main investment every year. Well, I, I have yet to ever have to replace any of mine. But that doesn't make a very good business for you. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not in business to get rich. I'm in business to grow food and help people grow food. That's my thing. I've, I've been rich. I've been a millionaire and lost it. It ain't what it seems to be. I, I am much happier doing it this way. And I like to see it when people are successful. Go in here, you can see there's lots of peppers. My favorite plant here is this Topsy Tom. Grows well in this system. More uh, peppers. Every, this is about 40 feet long. Uh, 500 plants. Let's start from the beginning. What we have here is the nutrient tank, which basically feeds everything. And we have beefsteak. Next to that, Tiny Tim. You can see leaf lettuce. Got mixed reds. Have jalapenos on the top, cucumber on the bottom. We have California Wonders, which are a orange pepper. You never have too many peppers. They dehydrate well. They're expensive. These are Topsy Tom tomatoes. These just grow like, they like it in here. And then this here takes about, oh, all of uh, five to 10 minutes a day. Actually mix your stuff up, feed the plants. Everything runs through these lines. And then once it gets to the top, what you got here are drippers. As you can see, got extra lines here running down to individual pots so that everything gets fed well and watered well because as these things grow, they take up more and more. Now we'll look at a conventional garden here on this side. Not ultimately space efficient because everything is growing in a row and not up. And this is pretty low maintenance as well, except for the weeding. The weeding's not much fun. Another nice aspect of being in here is just the low maintenance and the ease of use smaller systems this is what we call a deck garden this is what most of my urbanites buy because it's got curb appeal it's sexy looking you know once you have the pot stacked on it they've got 50 gallon tanks they're fully self-contained and run themselves so the idea is you could even put this on uh, an apartment terrace or apartment balcony that's what we get a lot of people doing they'll either do this one or they'll do a patio garden which is a single tower and the single tower, of course, those are my number one sellers because they're affordable mm -hmm. and it'll grow 20 plants. So your setup is similar to more conventional hydroponics, but the pots are what make it unique? Yeah, the pots and the stacking system. We basically okay. came up with the whole vertical hydroponics for growing food. And we're the only ones that do a recirculating system. Most hydroponics, especially tower systems, do what they call drain to waste which means the water goes down through and just runs out on the ground. To me, that's a total waste. This is the wind system. Now, see, it's a hydroponic garden. And I designed it for farmers, for people out in the country, like preppers. That's where the problem arised, is with preppers. What's the first thing they say? We don't use power. Remember, they're preppers, they're off the grid. So my garden all of a sudden became useless to them because it's got pumps. So my answer was this. This is the turbine system. 
and you can see how easy that turns. And the reason I went this way versus solar only, the problem with solar only is in the best part of the country, you get six hours a day of sun. What do you do with the rest of the day to generate power? Yeah, these spin really easy. That's generating power right now. I'd call it a trihelix. And how did you come up with this? I kept finding the flaws in traditional wind power. The biggest flaw in traditional wind power is, you know, what we call the horizontal windmill with the propeller on the okay. front. Okay. They spend most of their time trying to find the wind. So that makes a regular turbine worthless because it's here, then it's jumping to here, then it's jumping back, and it's never getting any time to turn because it's trying to find the wind. And that to me was a waste of time. So I went from that to this because I don't care what direction the wind is coming from, it can come over here, well, this is gonna catch it. If it comes over here, it's always gonna turn. So it's always gonna be generating power. It don't matter how gusty and how inconsistent the wind is gusting, it's always gonna catch it and turn. Now, I, I call it a trihelix, and the reason I call it a trihelix is I do them in sets of three. This first design, each turbine could only do 150 watts. So that's one, two, three, four, 450 watts is what I was getting out of this system. I have since improved it to where each turbine is 400 watts now. How did you improve it? Well, the, my original design, and if you want to see them, I, I have them back over by the building, I okay. can show you. Okay. Most people think of it an alternator like what you have on your car. You know, the big round thing with the big coils and it weighs a ton, which is a good idea, but it's totally inefficient. It's meant to be run by a motor, hence your car engine. But that's what turbines are made with. You know, all current turbines are made with that style of an alternator. What I did is the original design is what we call a pancake alternator or an axial flux alternator. It's storage, but I also have my old prototypes and my old test stuff in here. It's a mess. In your garage. Yeah, it's essentially my garage. Here's a bunch of my blades that have been pressed and ready to be built. These are the original blades. Okay. I have newer ones. Okay. This is the alternator that we made. Doesn't look anything like a car alternator, does it? This is the coil. Each one of these is a copper coil that's actually made in the circuit board. That's how we get the wire wrappings instead of a regular coil. This, ah, these are rare earth magnets. A matter of geopolitics. Finally, so those are the magnets. This sits on the bottom. There's another one of these that sit in the lid and it, this will sit like this. So as these, and the magnets turn, not the circuit board. You see in a regular system, it's the coils that are turning usually, but this has one on each side that spins, which of course generates the power, which comes out on these leads. That's how simple it is. Basically no moving parts. Where we improved it is I went smaller so the new alternator, this coil here is now as big as the hole, and we do layers. Our new one has 16 layers and is smaller. So the blade has better torque because the... the it's more density. Yeah, the more density and smaller, so the blade is out here, so it, it can turn, and since there's more layers, it generates more power. more power. We get 400 watts instead of 150. Okay. So the whole process is here then? Nothing is outside of here, correct. I do everything right here, except the metal work. I do just up the street at the metal shop. So this is the office for Easy Grow? Well, we do some Easy Grow stuff. It's my office for my internet. This also spawned out of a need for people in the country that are gardening also need internet. <laughs> so. And I do do the easy grow stuff. This is where we can process. And as you can see, we also process our antennas. This is what we do right here. We make these. So and you can see inside is the modem that connects you to the internet using a cell tower. This is all stuff I created. This is, well, where this connects with your, your farming is our greenhouses and everything have these on the roof. That way they can see everything their greenhouse is doing and they're, they're all in the country, so it's not like they can get fiber coming to the house. 
because that's our whole tiny farm system. It's an intelligent tiny farm. Because to me, what you see now is pretty much a joke. All this you're seeing and getting back to the plants and all this is really, in my opinion, backwards. Why? Because we lived there already. The teens, the 20s, the 30s. That was how you did everything was farming. Remember how much work that was? Hence, our system, it's a part-time job. Okay. That one is the Emily Arena in Florida. Okay. They feed everybody in the stadium from the tower gardens. This is lettuce gardens in Nigeria. Fully automated. They, they're actually stores. People actually walk down these aisles, buy directly from the pots, and the guys harvest it and put it in the bags for them. And our system actually makes it much more feasible because the sheer volume of food, eight times the density. So for cities, this really makes sense. Oh yeah. It saves 90% of your water. And for energy usage to pump the water and all that, that is a lot of... No, that runs on a single extension cord. You know, a standard 20 amp circuit is all it needs. Could you do it off grid? That's what these guys are for. This is a power system we did in Argentina. This is Buenos Aires, and there's the bleacher system in the middle of the highway. Okay, there we go. See all the turbines turning in the bleachers. This one bleacher does a quarter of a megawatt. The, this system, you can see six panels and six turbines. This will generate about uh, 1.2 kilowatts of power. This system will run that whole garden off the grid. About every three to six months, I have to make new concentrate. We use minerals, so each one is a different mineral. One is the micronutrients. I have calcium and magnesium. Now, the reason they're different colors is because I, I actually put dye, you know, food, food grade food coloring in them. That tells me, oh, the nutrient's getting into the system. Same here. Now, if they go clear, I know these tanks are empty. You know, we started everything so late this year, so peppers are not doing near as well. So I'll be curious how well they do. Now on the other side, cucumbers are doing fine. They don't have a problem with the heat. Here you go. I like doing this, so I keep it at what I call hobby scale, even though I can produce enough commercially to handle any size commercial garden. These are Cinderella's. These are Juliet's. That's a Cinderella. Where are my beef steaks? Okay, here's my beef steaks. Okay. Right here. We're still just a little family operation, and I don't want to change that because uh -huh. I love my hobby. I love being out here working with it, and we all know when your hobby turns into the job, it's no longer fun. You're right. That's why we call them uh, Cinderella beefsteaks. 